Okay, so here we are in some woods in the Scottish Borders. Yep. Um, and we're going to be looking for stuff. Yeah, there's lots of stuff lying around, so yeah, let's... lots of evidence. So let's see if we can find anything interesting. Exciting. Okay, so I just plucked this bottle um, out of this out of this mud and it says and I've never seen this before but it says Scott's emulsion and I can't think what that might be Scott's emulsion it's like a grey kind of coloured bottle as well I think that's interesting I don't think I've ever seen that before might have to look that one up Okay, so I think I found a bottle and it's whole and it's green. Oh, oh wait, it's got writing on it. What does that say? Luca. What's in here? Looks like Owl Brand. Oh, Owl Brand. I've never seen a bottle like that before. It's a cork top. Oh, I'm going to keep that. Oh, I've just spotted something quite fabulously spooky. There. <laughs> Doesn't that look interesting? Oh, yes. Oh, that is a very spooky doll's face. Oh, isn't that strange? Its eyelashes look like it's just got... <laughs> eyelashes look like it's got some kind of spider crawling out of its eye <laughs> oh could definitely make something with that grind it down maybe and put a bezel around it even and make a really creepy pendant maybe with like gemstone eyes or something <laughs> I love it it's a very very delicate Mother of Pearl button. It's just very, yeah, it's just kind of coming apart. <laughs> so I don't think it's gonna survive. Oh. Oh, it's broken. It's got something on it. It says Judge Brands Co. Limited, Gateshead, England. Oh, <laughs> I suppose that's not too far away. Pity it's broken. What is it? I think it's made of glass. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Oh, what a shame it's broken, but... <sighs> wow, look at that, there's glass. Wow. It's got glass flowers on it. That's amazing! I know! Wow, that's really... Maybe we could get those off somehow. Incredible like... piece of art glass. Wow. I think it's uranium. It looks very uranium-like, yeah. doesn't it? Just found this. Lovely little green bottle. There's no writing on it. It's got bubbles in the glass. It's a cork top. And I can see it's been made in a three-part mould. You can see the seam there. But I like it. I'm going to keep it. Oh, wow. This would have been a cool bottle. Look at that. Blob top. Oh, wow. I love that. That big blobby top. Oh, what a shame. I wonder if I can make something with that. I think I might keep it. There's this piece of um, pottery here. It's got... It's like flags. I might keep that too. It's 
spotted some really pretty coloured glass. Like, I hope it's glass, that orange blob down there. Yeah, that's a nice piece of glass. Bead material. And there's lots of bottles and things, but nothing we haven't really seen before. So we're hoping to get some unusual items today. But what's this? Oh yes, it is glass. Wow, that's like fluorescent orange. That's really nice glass. Oh, I see a stopple bopper there. It's sticking out. And more glass here. Oh, that's beautiful blue glass. Yep. <laughs> glass for making things things. Let's see what the stopper says. Hmm, Bulma Cider. Volcanite Stopple Bopper. And I've not seen that one before either, so that's always good. It's always good. I see... Actually, a bottle top down here. Still in the bottle. In the bottleneck. That's cool. SCWSD. So I've decided to film this. I'm going to take this um, stopple bopper out of here, but I'll be the first person to take this out since the last person put that in there. So how strange. Ta da! A direct connection to the person who actually used that bottle. Really weird. It's a it's a meat paste pot. Um and it has a local town name on it, Carlisle. And I've never seen a paste pot with a a local name on it, a local town on it. Really weird. Unfortunately it's very battered up. I can't really see the initials on there. BG, I think? BG Carlisle. It's got a big crack running all the way underneath and all the way up the side. But I think I'll leave it here, but I'll definitely look up that name or those initials collection of left behind bottles and I, I see a clay pipe bowl up there but I don't think there's anything here that I'm gonna take but I thought it'd be interesting if we could have a look and see what's here a bit of flask and a pretty pink teapot lid tin teapots I think they might have put all the broken glass in a heap to avoid animals getting oh cut. Whoa, look at the size of that. Oh, I think this might have been some kind of water filter maybe. Or some just kind of um beer dispensing barrel. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. I'm close enough. No, it's blank. But it's very um, burnt inside. It looks very black. May even still have the tobacco or remains of the tobacco in there.
scrape this bad lad out. Ta-da! It's huge! A massive glass button. It must have been off a coat. It must be a coat button. Gimongous! Whoa! Oh, unfortunately he's got a chip just there. Still very pretty though. Wow, I just found the most enormous knuckle bone. This must be a cow's knuckle bone. So we used to play the game of knuckle bones with mini versions of this made of plastic. And I think they originally used um, sheep's knuckle bones. <laughs> That is one big knuckle bone. I'm going to keep it. What's this? It looks like a pepper pot. It's all rough at the bottom. That's strange. What is it? It looks like it's slotted into something. Oh. It's interesting. It's almost like a... I don't know. I wonder what that was. I'm going to have to do some investigating. Oh my goodness, I think I found a bead. <gasps> Look at that. Oh wow. That's a nice one. Zoom in. Look at that. It's beautiful colour. I love it. I think it's ceramic, a ceramic bead. It's sort of it's sort of got a luster finish. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. Yay. There's a bottle here. It looks like the bottom of a cod bottle or something. Is it whole? Is it whole? It's not a cod bottle, but it's whole. Oh my goodness. And it says Kelso. Wow. Trademark. Oh, does that say Middlemass and Sun? Registered. Kelso! And it would have had one of those ceramic swing top lids. Wow, that's a great bottle. And it's whole. To add to Mum's amazing Kelso bottle, just had a look at it and it's amazing. It's got like a little star there. That's so cool. Anyway, I just found this in the tree. <laughs> it says Middlemass up there as well. And um, old, old fashioned. Uh, old fashioned, right? Yes. Registered Middlemass, Middlemass something, Ginger Beer Kelso, that's so cool. I might just take that because it's, it's lovely really. Could just cut it down and use it for a jar. Beautiful pictorial. So, I just found this saucer. 
and it is entirely whole, like unchipped and undamaged and everything. So I'm tempted to take that. I could use it for like a, the cat's food dish or something. Put it in the bag. Look at this, I'm so, you know what? I've always wanted to find a whole plant pot in a dump and this is a huge one, look at it. It's a massive entire plant pot. We just, yeah, mum just said, we just we recently just um, rescued some dried out plants from a supermarket, some house plants, so this will be absolutely perfect. Well, that's also going to have to come home with us today. And what's this? It's like a bit of a cod bottle or beer. Island Street Gala Shields. That would have been a really cool bottle. And then I spotted something up here. Go under the trees. Oh look, there's a froggy! Look! See a little froggy! Hello froggy! Geraldine. I think that's Geraldine the frog. It looks like one of, one of this year's young. Hello Geraldine. Here's a cute little bottle. I quite like these little bottles. Look, it's a miniature whiskey. I quite like these, I don't know. I might just take it. I suppose it would go in our little bottle collection at home. I'll take it. <laughs> just found few bottles here. This one says younger and they've got crown tops and this one here that also says Gidgen? Is that Gidgen? T. Scott's and Son established 1780 Selkirk. How cool is that? And it's not a terribly old bottle, but I think I might take it because I quite like that. Interesting information on there. And I also did spot another tiny little bottle that's fallen out down here. Oh, and it's whole. It's a whole bottle. It's a little green one. It's been made in a three part mold as well. That's cool. You can see there's a seam around the shoulders there and then there's a seam that goes up there to the lip. Yes, I love little bottles. Though um, I think it's a rather dangerous to dig in here because there's some large pieces of masonry sitting on top of this soil and if you dig then yeah, you get some masonry on your head and I don't think that would be a very wise thing to do. But I'm happy with these bottles that I've found. Um, I think this is an Imari style teapot. I think it's, um, I don't know if it's made in Japan, I don't think so. It's got a number on the bottom and a squiggle. But it's, it looks Imari style, or inspired, but it's so pretty. And I think we should take it and put a plant in it or something. Little tiny lid. Oh, that's so pretty. Look, it's a butterfly part of a dish. That would make a lovely pendant. It would. Oh, we'll have to keep that to cut out. Yeah. We've got a pile of... of things we've got to cut out. We do have a pile of yeah. things we've got to cut out for jewellery. I think I spy a little jar lid. I love these little jar lid. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's off the top of a teapot, I think, but it looks like it has words on it. This, look. Yes, look. It's a whole little jar lid. Whoops. With bubbles in it. I'm sure we probably have a jar that this would fit. 
gosh, here's another whole plate. Whole saucer. Oh no, I'm tempted to take this as well. Oh gosh. It's going in the bag. Could always do with dishes and things like that for animals, so it's justifiable. <laughs> There's so much going on here. Oh look! This little pill bottle's actually got words on it. What's that say? Oh, is that oh, bisurated magnesia tablets. Oh, that's interesting. It, I think that's kind of like a um, milk of magnesia. I think that's the same sort of thing, but this is obviously in tablet form rather than the liquid form that milk of magnesia is made from. Interesting. Oh my gosh guys, I think this is like the last find of the day, but it's probably the best stopper I've ever found. The bottle is broken, but look, look, there's a heart shaped stopper in it. Let me get it out. Oh, look, oh my gosh, look, it's a little, oh my goodness, that is the cutest thing and I am so happy, oh wow. I love it. Okay. We probably got bottles <laughs> that would fit in. Yeah, we definitely have bottles that would fit in, but the original bottle, sadly, is dead. But, <gasps> yay! <laughs> My best find of the day. We can go home happy now. We can go home happy now. Right, time to leave with our booty. And my heart shot shaped heart shaped stopple bopper. Hello. Hello. So that's the end of another day's um, bottle. What did we call it? I don't know. Tip we're, ratching. We're gonna do a on our community page. We're gonna do a um, a vote. So you guys can vote on the what, what new name we should call. Yeah. Dump scratching. Rap scavenging. <laughs> we don't have a name for it yet. So. Tip ratching's my favourite so far. Yeah, tip ratchet. But yeah. okay, um, we've had a, a pretty good day. We found some, surprisingly, we found yeah. some really nice bottles and I found a heart stopper. See what it did there? Definitely. A heart, a heart stopper, <laughs> literally a heart stopper. That's like the best stopper we've ever found. It's great. So Bye. we'll see you back at home. Bye. Bye. We do. Things. And some things that we've not found before, and that's always good. It is, yes. We've got making things things as well, yeah. which is also always good. Yeah. <laughs> um, where should we start? We've got a child's lid, which we find one of these pretty much every time we go yeah, out. Yeah, child's teapot lid. This, the paint has um, all come off, but this was a French flag. <laughs> and but the blues all come off. Yeah, all the blues have come off, so... Um, a clay pipe with burning inside, been well used, plain. Make a good mushroom. Will make a very good fungus look. It's great fungus shape. 
Um, and a beautiful butterfly. We're hoping to be able to cut that out um, and make it into something. Yeah, definitely. I think it, it's perfect, like, pendant size, isn't yeah. it? Um, uh, dish of... Oh, yeah, we do have two dishes, but one of them is actually currently outside and being put to good use. So, uh, yeah, the shrews are loving it. And they are both saucers, but we think this is the earliest one. Yeah, definitely. Um, probably early 19th century. We think, yeah, we were, after cleaning, we realised it was really quite old. When you compare it to the other one, um, yeah, there's a clear difference. And you can see how it's ripply on the bottom there. It's been hand turned. Uh -huh. And it's got this, um, it's like this pearlware. That's what it looks like to me. It's got yeah, a very faint yeah. decoration around the edge and a decoration in the middle there as well. It's very faint. You can barely yeah. see it. But it I is think beautiful. it's been used to feed cats on throughout the generations. <laughs> and it will be again. Wow, I really hope it is as old as we as it looks. Yeah. <laughs> as we think <laughs> as we think it is. Yeah. But yeah, that's that. And then on the dish with these things, we've got a um a doll's head a well, face. Else? Um, this big giant um, glass coat button, I think it's probably off a coat, isn't it? Yeah. Um, a mourning button, but by this sort of era, 19, 20, early 20th century, mourning kind of gone out of fashion, so it's yeah. probably just... Just a black coat button. Yeah, yeah. black coat button. Um, maybe worn on a posh so jacket. <laughs> uh, a little... Um, M.O.P. button? Very, very... They go powdery, yeah, they so do. When, you clean, when you try to clean them, they just disintegrate yeah, mostly. look, it just yeah. all comes off. And um, the eyes on this are quite disturbing. <laughs> look at the eyelashes. They're like spiders. <laughs> I love it, though. Look at the mad eyelashes. I might try and make a pendant with that. It, yeah, it's the perfect shape and size, yeah, isn't it? I want to do and that. And it's got these really thin eyebrows, which were popular. It was popular to have really thin eyebrows in the um, 20s and 30s, wasn't it? I don't know. I wasn't around then. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. Yeah. And Mum's... My beautiful, beautiful bead. bead. It's ceramic. And it check. could have been made to imitate turquoise or jade or something like that. Probably the 1920s where long necklaces were really popular. It's very pretty anyway. <laughs> and we love finding beads. Yes, you know what we're like with beads. And here we have some glass, and talking about beads... Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can make beautiful beads we can. out of this glass. This is good glass. We've got, like, fluorescent orange, um, and then there's a bit of a blob top here. Um, would have been some kind of... I love that blob top. I, I might try it's and grind that off and just make it into a massive bead for, like, oh, a yeah. plant hanger or something. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Giant bead. Blob top bead. Um, yeah, just really nice glass for beads. Well, that's part of a um, lampshade, I think, of an oil lamp. Yeah, yeah. An old Victorian one, actually. So, yeah. Because we, we often find this glass, um, yeah, this ripply glass yeah. in Victorian dump, so... And here we have um, the standard jam marmalade. straight marmalade pot. Can't go wrong with a good marmalade. But they are great. Yes. Cool. I mean, these get left behind by bottle diggers they do. all the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. But we find that they're great for putting things in. We yeah. have on our work table. Got who knows how many we have around the house. We have We've got them everywhere. our kitchen utensils in them. <laughs> yeah. We've got another one on the other yeah. side. Oh, this one's a little bit more interesting actually because it has something here on the bottom. Okay, so this is the information I found about Govencraft or Govencraft. Govan pottery, Govan Croft rather. Um, the pottery was founded by James Buchanan in 1911. It was situated in the extreme east end of Glasgow and made nothing but utilitarian stoneware until 1946. Having been said to have the majority of the jam jar market, so yeah, it oh, makes so, so yeah. they they mainly they the up jars. to the 1940s made jam jars, and here's one of those jam jars. So there you go. So there you go. We've got two. And two we actually jars. um we mentioned in our last video we got glass paint, but we also 
when we got the glass paint months ago and we got ceramic paints as yeah. well. So that's another reason why we've been collecting these up because... Hopefully we'll have time. Yeah. We'll Eventually. Have, we want to do a video of painting, of doing ceramic yeah. painting and glass painting, but yeah. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so this... more ceramics, yeah. I couldn't resist this beautiful old teapot. Even though it's knackered. <laughs> and covered in rust and stains. <laughs> yeah. It's just so pretty. And we're going to put a plant in it, so look out to the end of the video and you'll see that. <laughs> yes, that leads us on to our other find. This bad lad here, this massive pot, and I had to pretty much file this clean. So it was, it was absolutely covered in um, rust and, and burnt material, so yeah. Took some cleaning. Beautiful. I love antique plant pots. Been handmade, hand thrown, which is so cool. And luckily, it is yeah, stamped. It is right here. And I've been able to find out some information about it. And what does it say on there, Alex? Wellington Pottery, Glasgow. So, from the index of firms, 1888, I've got this information. The Wellington Pottery, 50 Wesleyan Street, Gallowgate. And the proprietor was William C. Williamson. And the Wellington Pottery is an old landmark in the history of commercial Glasgow. It was established in 1797 on the present site by the deceased Mr. Adam Cuby. Uh, the Wellington Pottery is the only pottery in Scotland which devotes special attention to the production of flower pots. And in these articles, the firm does a large trade over the three kingdoms, that'll be Scotland, England and Wales. The other manufacturers, as varied as they are beautiful, have a very extensive sale in all parts of the country. There are about 50 workers employed at the Wellington Pottery, which in Glasgow and the country generally is as popular as it is old. Oh. So that's from um, an index to firms in 1888. Okay, so what's, is, what's, is it still going now? Or what? No, it's not going now. I think it stopped in the 1930s. Oh, okay. So this dump, um, we think, is Early 19... 20th century. Yeah, 20s or 30s, something along those lines. So that makes sense, yeah. So yeah, if it stopped around then... Although someone could have had that pot in their family for a lot longer. Yeah, it could have just been an old pot they chucked out. Yeah. Yeah. So that is really cool because it's uh, the first um, intact. Well, it's not the first. I did find a, a tiny. I did find a tiny little plant pot in the same dump a while ago. But yeah, this is the first substantial whole plant pot that we found. And we're going to be putting a plant in it. Yeah. So stick around to the end of the video where we'll put um, one of our rescued house plants. So it'll probably be the first plant to go in that pot for about a hundred years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be so cool. Yeah. Okay, and down here we have um, the sad remains of a ginger beer bottle. Um, it's a Middlemass ginger beer bottle, old-fashioned, registered, uh, a Middlemass and Son ginger beer Kelso. And we have uh, another one which I found, which is also a Middlemass and Son bottle, registered Kelso. Kelso. <clears throat> and that would have been a swing top lid. Yeah. The top's a bit um, I think that's maybe why they left it behind, because we yeah. you were digging in the spoil, and um, they probably found bottles that were in much better condition, so they just left this one yeah. behind. Luckily for us, though. <laughs> and there's two um, bottle stoppers here, and one is Bulmer's, and the other one Bulmer's is... Cider. This is the SCWS, yep. which is the Scottish... Cooperative Wholesale Society, and we've already talked about the um, Wholesale Society, the Cooperative Wholesale Society. So this was yeah. just a Scottish branch of the same thing. So that's cool. We don't have yeah. one of those. First one of those we found. Okay, so I do have some information about the history of Bulmers. It was founded by Henry Percival Bulmer, or Percy as he liked to be known, um, who first pressed apples from his father's orchard. Um, using a neighbour's stone mill. Um, he was apparently, he didn't have any qualifications and that's why that prompted him to start his own um, cider making business. His brother, however, was um, 
a Cambridge graduate, but he, funnily enough, joined his brother in the business. And together they um, purchased 10 acres of land for a factory and a farm to conduct experimental research on old orchards and plant new trees to ensure a constant supply of apples. And Bulmers went on and on and on, and it's still making cider today. Yeah, it is, yeah. You can buy it on the shelves. I read that they are 100% British company, so they grow... Which is very unusual. Which is, yes, say. it is unusual. For a big um, company. So they, uh, they grow all the apples here in the UK that Actually, they use in their cider. Actually, in 1934, they did export a lot to um, New York. So, uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, just a little vulcanite, vulcanized rubber bottle stopper um, has all that history behind it. One of the unusual finds, and we'll put a picture on the screen. Yeah. Um, this is a pound spot, which held some fine powder or sand. And when you were writing a letter in ink back in the day, you would shake some of this on to dry it quickly so you can put it in the envelope. Yeah. And this, you can see it's been inserted into something. It would have had a cork in the bottom. I think that's and what threw, threw you off at first, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It, it's insert. Um, and we have got a picture to show you one that's in a vintage car with its inkwell. Yeah, so it would have been like a novelty. Yeah, novelty. I, I don't think it's been used. Um, because if, if you look, Some if you of the look holes at the top, are blocked up by the glaze. Yeah, look at all these holes. Just, I think it's just been a part of some kind of cheap novelty. Yeah, yeah. Writing. Probably something you win at a fair. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we've got a, a Gideon T. Scott and Son established 1780 Selkirk, um, and it's a beautiful bottle, crown top bottle. And it's in very... We actually found another two. Um, so to the guys that we know who dig there, we've met a few. Um, yeah, we left two of these behind <laughs> if you're interested. So, yeah. Um, but we don't actually know much about Gideon, unfortunately. No. But, yeah. A local uh, brewer, probably. Yeah, yeah. Whoops. And this one, can't find anything about it. Yeah, this is an enigma, guys. So if anyone um, can help us with this, because we've searched and can't find anything. It says... Owl brand. How interesting is that? And, and on then... the other side, it's got Lucha, which is in Italy. And we can't find anything about this. Nope. Um, Lucha, I love the bottle, though. Um, there is olive oil that came from Lucha, so it could have been that. But we can't find an owl brand. And the, I think uh, it could have been vinegar, but we can't find anything about owl brand. And it, it's got a crack in it, but when we found it, it didn't have a crack yeah, in it. Yeah, that's this a new addition. We came home yesterday to find that it mysteriously had a crack in it. Yeah, so we don't know if it's just um, the pressure from, you know, the, the heat shock since it's been in the ground for Change God knows how many years. Yeah. And yeah. And well, someone in our family's dropped it. And not owned up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we don't know. It might have yeah. just been the the, the um, thermal shock of bring it in yeah, our nice yeah. warm house and it's just cracked with the, yeah, the pressure in the glass. because it's unusual. I know, it's a huge shame, but we might be able to fix it with some fine glue. Um, this is a little miniature... I love it. I know, I love these bottles. We've got a few, but it's a little miniature, um, like, whiskey, whiskey. bottle. <laughs> oh, and this amazing, like, a uh, glass basket that Mum found. It is incredible. And it's all broken, but it's still beautiful. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> broken, but beautiful. <laughs> but it well, is... broken, anyway. It is. It is gorgeous, and um, we might be able to use that glass to make beads. It is we uranium might be able to uh, salvage these. Oh, it's uranium. Yeah, we use that to no, make beads. we so we we checked and it's uranium. Yeah, it so does it, glow. We don't feel like it would be wise to melt down uranium glass and yeah, no. cut it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's a shame it's broken. But I don't think there's anything we can do with no. it. Sadly, pretty though. It is pretty. Would have been lovely. Such a shame. And we have 
a green bottle that I found. Yeah, and another a green bottle I found. They're both the same. Mum's is bigger. Look, we've got a oh, mother and daughter. Mine's the mummy. Mine's the mummy bottle. And <laughs> the daughter. They're made in the exact same way. They've been made in a three-part mould. You can see um, the seam. There. The seam goes around the shoulders and and down the side of the bottle and up to the up to the lip there. They're very similar. But I love little green bottles. Oh yeah, really nice. And um, this is little another little medicine bottle. I think they're medicine. They're medicines. Yeah. Um, this is another little medicine bottle. Um, but the star. But the star of the show the today. The star of our mudlark bottle dig. Is our heart stopper find? <laughs> it's so Literally. beautiful. Oh wow! I'm so happy. It's a heart stopper in more than one sense. <laughs> yeah. And miraculously, it fits. It does. The little bottle. That no, has. it fits yours as well. Look. It looks better in the small. It one. does. Ta da! Look at that. We've got a love potion bottle. Yeah. Oh, love potion. Secret oh. love potion. We should put a label on it. We should design a label yeah. and put, put it on. More than Mudlark's love potion. <laughs> yeah, you can turn anyone who in your family who isn't interested in mudlarking into someone who is yeah. interested in it. Mud who falls love in love potion. with mudlarking. Yeah. So you never have to mudlark alone. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, on a serious note, it probably it was it would have been in a um, a perfume bottle, <laughs> little perfume bottle, heart stopper. Um, I think you said something about like a dripper bottle or something. Yeah, I saw on an old poster um, there was something like that from a dripper bottle. Not sure what that was. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's it's, it's definitely from a perfume. Um, but that That's concludes it. that concludes this this week's um, bottle ratching, scratching, dump. Tip Dump searching. Ratching. Tip ratching. That, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so all that remains is to say a big thank you to all of you yep. for watching, all of our wonderful subscribers. And all of our patrons. And all of the people that take the time and trouble to comment. We love reading them, even yep. if we can't answer all of them. Yeah. And also the people who have been buying things for us from our... Amazon wish list. Thank you so much. Yes, it's amazing. Um, we have made great use. I know we keep saying it, and we say these thank yous every week. But yeah, they, it, you all do mean a lot to us. So yeah. it is important that we thank you all. And um, yeah, now we're going to plant something yes, <laughs> in we'll, our pot. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.